welcome. My name is Melissa Evans Brown, and I am a member of the Westby Church of Christ, and we are beginning a segment on healthy churches. Today, I have with me Dr. Jacqueline Thomas. She is a native of Mobile, Alabama. She received a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from the University of North Alabama. She has a Master's of Science in Nursing from the University of Alabama in Huntsville, and a Doctorate of Nurse in Practice from the University of Alabama at Birmingham. She is currently an assistant professor at the University of West Florida in the Master of Science in Nursing, Master of Science in Nursing, Family Nurse Practitioner Program. Um, she has a diverse health services employment background, including being the COO of a county health department's clinical services division. Dr. Thomas's full bio will be located on the Westview Church of Christ website for your viewing pleasure, and that is at westviewcochsv.org. So today, Dr. Thomas, we have, um, we're going to be discussing hypertension, or what we normally call high blood pressure. And we know that this is an issue in not only the black community, but uh, more so in the black community than others. Um, so we are going to discuss this. Uh, high blood pressure today. I have a, a, a series of questions that I'm going to ask Dr. Thomas so that she can better inform us on how to deal with high blood pressure. So Dr. Thomas, my first question for you today and how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Good. good. Um, what causes high blood pressure? Well, high blood pressure, there's several causes of high blood pressure, uh, possible causes, but first, as you stated, high blood pressure affects um, primarily African Americans, uh, particularly men, but since 2017 it seems as if African American women even have a higher rate than the men. Mm. But as well, high blood pressure affects one out of three Americans. Mm. And with high blood pressure there's several different causes or types of high blood pressure. One is what we call essential hypertension. And essential hypertension means that there's no known reason for the cause of hypertension, and that's the majority of hypertension cases, or high blood cases. Another cause of hypertension could very well what we call secondary hypertension. That means that there's another cause for the hypertension or high blood pressure, which can be very well be related to a health condition. So how do you distinguish between what is essential versus what is a secondary cause. One very well may be that a person may present to their provider or take their blood pressure and it may for a first time reading of 180 over 110 or greater than 180 over 110. This person very well may be of the age of less than 30 or greater than the age of 50. They very well may have be on a regimen of medications or therapy that's not really showing any difference in their blood pressure readings. So first we have essential, which is the majority of the cases. Secondary, which may consist of five to ten percent of cases in anyone's uh, primary care uh, office that treats people that comes in with high blood pressure. Then we also have what we call white coat hypertension. And I'm smiling about that because I at one point had a tendency of having a white coat hypertension and what that is is that when you go to your primary care pro pro provider's office, either a physician or a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant, and your blood pressure is elevated and usually that is related to anxiety. Mm. And one time I did a, a little brief study on my own self and I took my blood pressure in the parking lot and it was normal, mm -hmm. what we would call normal. And then I went into the office and my blood pressure was elevated. Okay. And then w when I got back home, I, I, re I retook my blood pressure and it was within normal range. So that's what we call white coat hypertension and anxiety plays a part with that. Okay. Then there's another hypertension, what we call mask hypertension. And that's the opposite, whereas your blood pressure is usually high on a daily basis, but when you go to your provider's office, it may be within normal range. Mm -hmm. So as far as hypertension, there's really, um, there's several types, and one is, again, is essential, which is what we call essential, which is the 
main reason for hypertension. Then we also have a secondary that means that there's another health condition that's going on that's causing the blood pressure to be high. Mm -hmm. And a person could very well have what we call mask or white coat hypertension. Okay. I'm familiar with that white coat because <laughs> uh, after recently going through surgery, yes. um, they take your blood pressure. Right. Of course, your blood pressure is a lot higher than, um, because of the anxiety yes. than anything else. So how do I know if I have high blood pressure? I've never, um, I haven't, if a person has never been diagnosed with high blood pressure, how would I know? if I had high blood pressure? Well, high blood pressure is what we call the silent killer because we don't know at times that whether or not we have high blood pressure. And one way that we can determine if we have high blood pressure is by being screened for our blood pressure, which is having your blood pressure taken. Mm -hmm. Sometimes individuals think that they have blood pressure pressure problems because of some of the physical symptoms they may have. They may say, well, you know, I feel flushed, I feel nervous, I can't sleep at night, I think my blood pressure is high. That may or may not be a contributing factor, but it's not something that caught to let you know that you have high blood mm -hmm. pressure. Mm -hmm. But as well, you know, there are other myths out there, and this is from the American Heart Association, and one is that people may present with or state that they have a nosebleed or a headache, and so they mm -hmm. know that that's related to them having high blood pressure. Okay. But one of the things we need to know about that is if you, if you happen to have a headache or a nosebleed and you take your blood pressure and the top number is greater than 180 or, and or the bottom number is greater than 120, and you just don't feel well at all, we need to be concerned. And mm -hmm. so if that happens, a person should retake their blood pressure in about five minutes. Mm -hmm. And if they continue to have the headache and or the nosebleed with a blood pressure, what we call a hypertension or high blood pressure crisis, mm -hmm. when, that, when it's greater than 180 over uh, or the bottom number is greater than 120, that again is called a hypertensive crisis and then you need to call 911. Okay. Okay. But other than that, high blood pressure is silent. We don't know. So that's why we need to have a screening done and the screening is having our blood pressure taken on a routine basis. On a routine basis. Mm -hmm. Cool. I, um, I was wondering that because I, um, I have a brother who died from a stroke. Yes. Um, and his diagnosis at death was uncontrolled high yes. pretension. Yes. Um, but I, we did notice that um, he had been complaining about a consistent headache mm -hmm. for months. Yes. And um, he was just taking over-the-counter right. type um, medications and things. So I was just wondering if that could be a sign of high blood pressure. Um, and you did mention that it mm -hmm. could be, but he should have probably been taking his um, blood pressure on a regular basis, and right. that could have probably right. helped. Um, and uh, eliminated that and he got yes. on high blood pressure medicine and then he would have probably been fine. It's a possibility. It's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so what is a normal blood pressure? I heard you talk about yes. taking your blood pressure. Yes. What's a normal blood pressure? Well, a normal blood pressure is less than 120 over 80, mm -hmm. either or. And the, your, the top number is your stuts systolic and your bottom number is what we call your diastolic. From that, so high blood pressure is recognizes in stages. Mm -hmm. So when you determine whether or not you have high blood pressure, usually it, the top number is going to be greater than uh, 130 and the bottom number is going to be greater than 80. Mm -hmm. And usually stage one is, is 130 to 139 stage, I mean, with stage one, and, and with the bottom number is between 80 to 89. Mm -hmm. So if you ever take your blood pressure, does that mean that you have the diagnosis of hypertension? No, that's when you need to go to your primary care provider to determine what's going on with you. Okay. But if you do have a blood pressure that's greater than 130 over uh, and or over 80, then definitely it warrants a visit to your primary care provider. Okay. And if it's done on a consistent basis, consistent if you see that. That's mm -hmm. what I was wondering, mm -hmm. if it, that's a one time or consistent, that is a consistent basis. Okay, so what kind of diet, say, um, if I am diagnosed with high blood pressure 
is there any kind of diet that can help me control it? Do I have to go to my primary care? Oh, um, one of the things that, when you mentioned, how, do I have to go to my primary care provider? Or one of the things that we all should practice or do rather, regardless if we do not have any active problem or health condition, is to have that wellness visit mm -hmm. or that annual physical. Mm -hmm. But uh, once, particularly when you reach a certain age, you know, 18 years or older, but even when someone is less than 18 years of age, mm -hmm. uh, a routine visit to your primary care provider is always worn what we call wellness visits mm -hmm. or a comprehensive annual visit and that's at the time when your provider will ask you questions about your health, mm -hmm. uh, about your social history, your family history because even with high blood pressure one of the contributing factors that puts you at risk for high blood pressure is your family history, mm -hmm. is that family history of high blood pressure mm -hmm. as well as uh, again if you're African-American that puts you, you know African Americans tend to have higher blood pressure that is a risk factor there and we mentioned before usually you will see high blood pressure more so in males versus females but since 2017 it has been noted that more African American female blood pressure has mm -hmm. been higher known to be higher okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So oh as far as diet let's get to the diet I apologize <laughs> for that okay. there's a diet what we call DASH diet mm -hmm. and that's recommended by the American Heart Association and DASH means a dietary, dietary approaches to stop hypertension mm -hmm. and DASH and that diet consists of fruits, vegetables, low fat dairy products as well as low saturated fats mm -hmm. and another thing that can we can do with our diet as far as lowering our blood pressure is limiting our salt a low sodium diet. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? Well, when I talk about low sodium diet, I tend to think about going into the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And of course now, grocery stores inside designs are designed in different ways, you know, you know, to lure you in, to have you to focus on certain things when you walk into. It could very well be the lighting to draw you into the grocery store. But if you think about it, Usually in your traditional grocery stores, you have all your aisles in the middle of the grocery store. And you have, uh, when you walk in, you're going to go around the grocery store. And normally, your foods that are in those aisles on the shelves are more your high sodium foods. Mm -hmm. Versus if you walk around the aisles, that's when you're going to get more your fruits, your vegetables, and the foods that are with less sodium. And it's always good to read your food labels to mm -hmm. see how much sodium content is within that food mm -hmm. per servings. Mm -hmm. And so that's another uh, probably talk we can talk about or brings uh, is how to read a food label. Mm -hmm. But look at your sodium content on your food labels. Mm -hmm. But again, particularly when foods are on the shelves, they have to be preserved. And that uh, preserving that food is having more salt into that yeah, food yeah. that's in there. So a low sodium diet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now one of the things that we talked about just a minute ago was the um, the numbers on a I guess a, a blood pressure our blood pressure numbers the systolic and diastolic mm -hmm. numbers. What does what does those okay. actually mean? Okay. Yeah, you have your blood pressure, you have two numbers, one on the top mm -hmm. and one on the bottom. The one on the top is called systolic, and the one on the bottom is called diastolic. And systolic means that when your heart pumps, the systolic pressure is measuring that pressure in your arteries when your heart is pumping. Mm -hmm. And the diastolic is more the resting when your heart relaxes in between beats mm -hmm. is measuring that pressure uh, when your heart relaxes. Okay. okay, so and that would determine that, that we have, might have a problem if that systolic number is high because that, that pressure means that right. there's something. Yeah, when you think about it, you think your heart is a muscle mm -hmm. and you have to think, of, I mean you don't have to, but think about your heart is pumping blood mm -hmm. into your arteries and if that pressure is high just think about the work that the heart is doing to pump blood mm -hmm. in the pressure that's high within your arteries as it's pumping mm -hmm. and the reason why you want to make sure that your blood pressure is under control because like anything if you continue when that heart continues to pump and is pumping against the pressure 
various things can go can happen. Mm -hmm. You don't want that heart to stop pumping against that pressure or not necessarily stop. Well, if it stops, you know what's going to happen. But you want the heart to be able to pump effectively because it can lead to other problems mm -hmm. uh, such as possibly congestive heart failure. Mm -hmm. You know, it puts you at risk for if your, if your blood pressure remains high or too high, it puts you at risk for having a stroke mm -hmm. and having a heart attack. Okay. Uh, so, and along with that is how can we manage our blood pressure where you can decrease that pressure, mm -hmm. but you won't have that much pressure within your arteries that puts you at risk for other chronic conditions or problems such mm -hmm. as having a stroke. Mm -hmm. And you just mentioned, my next question was going to be what health problems are associated with high blood pressure. And um, you just mentioned that um, uh, congestive heart failure is one. Are there others? Well, as, as far as congestive heart failure, and I'm gonna clarify that, let me, you know, one of the things that can happen if your blood pressure is not controlled is that your heart, you can, it puts you at risk for possibly congestive heart failure. Mm -hmm. It puts you at risk for all other conditions, some other conditions as well. It can affect your kidneys. A person could very, we look at your kidney functions when your blood pressure is elevated. And we identify that as uh, chronic kidney disease. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you have high blood pressure, when you think about high blood pressure, you not only think about high blood pressure that yeah, is in your arteries, but think about all the other vessels in your, um, in your body, such mm -hmm. as the vessels that's nourishing your eyes, mm -hmm. you know, your extremities, as, such as your arms and your legs, mm -hmm. uh, all your different organs. So if your blood pressure is high, it can very well start affecting other organs within your body, mm -hmm. such as your kidneys. Got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my last question for you, Dr. Thomas, is um, what is the treatment for high blood pressure? Um, yeah. we, we find out we've yeah. got high blood pressure yeah. um, and we go to the doctor and the doctor may be um, giving us all kinds of options for high yeah. blood pressure. I know that maybe food could help, but tell us some of the um, Okay. Well, high, high blood pressure consists of lifestyle uh, modification and management. Mm -hmm. And we have what we call uh, non-medication um, management versus uh, medication management. And it all, as far as starting medication, that's a decision between the uh, person that has, that's been uh, identified as having high blood pressure, mm -hmm. which, or hypertension, which is a diagnosis that will be determined by that person's health care provider. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it will be determined whether or not that person needed to start on medications for that particular, uh, for high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, so medication is one uh, option, but again, that's that decision between the provider and the person that's been, uh, just been diagnosed with high blood pressure. And then you have lifestyle modification, which uh, consists of not only your diet, but physical activity. Mm -hmm plays a big part, as well as stress, stress reducing, act well, exercise in itself can help reduce stress. Mm -hmm. And as far as exercise is concerned, American Heart Association rec uh, recommend that we have at least two hours and 30 minutes of exercise uh, per week. Oh, and that can equal I to- you were gonna say a day. Yeah, I <laughs> know. <laughs> which uh, consists of possibly five days a week of 30 minutes of some type of moderate intensity type of physical activity, which could consist of like having a brisk walk. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also uh, just having some type of muscle strengthening exercise as far as uh, making sure your muscles are strengthening, you know, to tone your muscles or what have you. But exercise, physical activity, along with your eating habits and drinking water if you uh, is recommended for a healthy person, I'm, gonna, I'm using the word healthy mm -hmm. because anytime you engage any type of physical activity, it's always best to talk with your health care provider, again, which is your physician, your nurse practitioner, or your physician assistant, to ask them what can I do as far as my physical activity with my diagnosis for hypertension. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, you always set that, you set your self-management goals mm -hmm. as far as where you would like to be, even 
how, what numbers should I be targeting for? You know, what physical activity, if I can do any? Mm -hmm. And if, so that has to be determined, but for a healthy person, however you may want to define healthy, at least uh, two hours and 30 minutes in a week's time, it, per the American Heart Association, is recommended a moderate intense, intense exercise activity. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us for this segment of uh, Healthy Church with the Westview Church of Christ. Thank you, Dr. Thomas, for um, the conversation. I um, think we gathered a lot of information. Uh, if you have any comments you'd like to, uh, or questions that you'd like to ask Dr. Thomas, you can put them in the comment section of, the, of our YouTube channel, and uh, we will get back with you as soon as possible. Thank you for joining us, and have a great day until our next segment.